Hello and welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller and today we're going to do a mini operations video. We're going to run this um, local switcher right here and switch the transload area. And in doing so, I'm going to show you some of the basic operations techniques that I employ when switching an industrial customer on one of my spurs. Now, I've anyone that's watched these videos before uh, will be familiar with some of the the techniques that I'm going to show you, but I haven't really thoroughly explained them before. And so I wanted to uh, show you them a little bit more detail and explain the reasoning why I use them and, and uh, do a little bit, go in a little bit better detail. So that way, um, perhaps you can use some of these ideas on your own layout at home. Um, now I wanna preface this by saying that a lot of these ideas have been taken from Lance Minheim. And I want to recommend a book to anyone who's interested in small switching layouts um, and especially in operations that has been very helpful to me. And that is this book here, How to Operate a Modern Switching Layout by Lance Minheim. Uh, this has a lot of the, the techniques that I'm going to show you. Now, some of them I've, I've kind of done my own kind of unique thing or spin on them a little bit. Uh, there's different ways of, of doing these exact specifically on your layout, and that's part of the fun of the hobby, is that you can kind of make it your own. This book came out in 2011. Um, I bought my books on Amazon, the, the, the Lance Minheim Small Switching Layout series, if you will. And so I would highly recommend that to anyone who's interested. So before we get going, I want to show you some of the tools that I use. So first, most importantly, um, is a switch stick. Now, bamboo skewers are very popular. What I did is, again, kind of using my unique thing. I went a step further and I bought these uh, little plastic tools. Uh, this is actually a like radio repair tool. It's just a plastic, it, it used to be a plastic uh, tool here. And what I did is I filed down um, slightly one point of this so that it's got a bit of a flat edge to it here. I don't know if you can see that very well. And it's, it's really useful in coupling. Um, the plastic doesn't damage the couplers and um, it's just kind of helpful to have a tool or a handle on it. And so this is something that I give to my crews. I tell my crews that you know they're welcome to bring their own switch stick, um, but I've got those cues if they, if they do so choose. Now the other tools that I'm about to show you, I've all made these from electrical connectors. So you can pick these up at, um, any probably any hardware store. Um, I was going to say Radio Shack. It's probably not going to work. I think I actually bought mine on Amazon. Um, so first I'll show you the simple flashing rear end device that just drops right into a coupler. Let's see if you can, can zoom in on this uh, camera. I don't know. It's not really zooming in. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better there. Um, but anyways, basically what this is, is I just, I just uh, glued a plastic coupler onto this uh, red metal connector and it just oops, drops right into the coupler and is used as a flashing rear end device on my trains. Now, um, my crews don't use these a ton. I'm going to go ahead and use it on this train because I don't need a caboose for this run today, but I do require um, some kind of rear end protection on a train. Since we're just switching this industry here, the transload, which is right next to the yard office, we don't need a caboose. I usually use a caboose for um, shoving into Bellevue, going into the last industry across the creek. Now the other tools are the blue flag, which is this, again, another uh, electrical connector. That basically what I did is I, I just bent, bent it here so that this part um, basically sits on the rail and stays there. And so what I use these for is basically it's it's saying that um, the industry has placed this on the spur because the car is being worked on and you must check with the industry before moving it. So we'll put this back on the spur here. And finally I have a slightly larger connector. This is known as the brake chalk or, or wheel chalk or wheel brake. There's various terms for it. Basically I use this to keep any car that's on a slight grade from rolling. And again, this fits pretty well on the rail, on the track. And what I usually do is place it, I'll show you an example here. Let me move the blue flag here. Um, basically I put it on the rail and then 
well, the car's wheel can rest against it. You see that there? So, so that way it doesn't, doesn't start going down. Now I use these in a couple spots. There are some industrial areas that aren't, um, what's the word, like balanced appropriately when I uh, built the bench work. And so, so there might be a spur that has a slight downgrade. And so I'll use that there. Um, the other use for it is I've got on my Gemini siding, um, there's a 1% grade there, which if I was building the layout all over again, I wouldn't put it there. Um, and so I'll have these brake chocks for the crew while they're switching to use um, to put the, them on the cars there. So those are some of the, the tools that I use that I've made, that I've custom made. So I wanted to show you those in a little bit better detail. Now, um, before we start running our local here, I want to mention that all of these things that I do are things that help slow the, basically slow the operations down a little bit. Um, any of you that have been to an operating session or that own layouts and have held an operating session will know that there's a lot of people, and I've, I'm guilty of this as well, I've done it before. There are a lot of people who just want to switch the industry you know, swap out the cars as fast as possible and keep moving on, you know, so you can finish the job. And that that's, you know, well and good, right? And sometimes, you know, that it's not necessarily your fault if you're doing the work. Um, a lot of times it's the, the model railroad layout owner's fault because they have so much work for you. It's, it's impossible to do it in, you know, like a four or five hour operating session or whatever. And so you have to work fast. Or maybe you want to get this job done so you can, you know, get to the next job and see more of the layout or operate on more of the layout, which is understandable as well. Um, for a small switching layout, I think things can be more relaxed because you have, have less things to, to do, less work, less to worry about. So then you can stretch out the work within um, the individual customer spots and spurs. So that's what I like about it. So this, this just slows the pace down and it encourages the crew to take their time. And I always tell people that when I start out an op session um, and I go through the briefing, I say, take your time. If you don't finish the work, don't worry about it. I tell them the main point is having fun. Just have fun doing what you do. And so I've, I find that it's important to slow it down. And the, what I like to, to call this aspect of the hobby is uh, incorporating the, the one to one scale aspects into model railroading. So the things that the real railroad crews do out there. You want to you want to bring it into the to the model railroad as much as you can. Now, obviously, there's there's a lot of it that could get boring, and um, you know if you drag it on too long, you're you're gonna um, you're gonna lose interest from your crews. So you want to avoid that. But I think there's some things in here that that you can do to help slow it down a little bit, make it a little bit more realistic at that one to one scale into the model railroading, and make it more fun. So so that's what what I want to um, say before before I really get into this. So let's go ahead and start running the local. And another thing that I find very important that I will mention to you is the speed of the locomotive. Um, make sure that you don't have your locomotive set too high. One thing that annoys me when I go to another model railroad and, and operate is you know the, the layout owner will tell me hey slow your train down you're going too fast um, another thing that i've heard used before is a term called quality throttle time in other words you you know just have fun running your your throttle and slow your train down and i always tell them i i'm honest i say hey if you didn't want me to run this train as fast as as it's going then why didn't you slow it down so make sure that uh, there are speed settings that decoders have you can change them and so I always like to have it set so that it's um, not quite as fast. The local right now is going at a, at about half the, the full speed just to give you an idea and another thing that I like to do to uh, add a little bit more realism is to add a little bit of momentum some acceleration and deceleration so I just turn the speed off and see how it's still going now it's not crazy like it's not going forever. You can still easily stop it, but it does does make it a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and pull these first cars out. And so my goal is, is that if a train is going full speed, uh, notch eight, you can still stop it easily. 
I'll just show you that. This is this is not H going into a spur. Okay, so that's as fast as it goes. Now let's see how long it takes to stop. And I'm not even using the brake. Okay, well. A derailment will definitely help it stop. I've noticed that the wheels on that hopper are not running too freely, so that could be the issue there. Okay, so you saw that it only took a few, maybe two or three feet to stop, really, at the most, and I didn't even use the brake. Um, so, so again, I, I think it's important to have it realistic like that. So let's go ahead and pick up this car. Um, I, I moved the blue flags already. I checked with the industrial foreman, that's me. Um, they need to pull their their equipment out first. I'm going to take my Fred off. So setting those speeds I, I feel is very important. I'm going to use the brake a little bit here. There, perfect stop. And now we're going to use our switch stick to make sure Yep, they're coupled correctly. Um, another thing that I like to to teach the crew to do is just a simple brake check like that before you really get going. Okay, now we'll move out. So setting up the speed of your locomotive before you even think about these other operating techniques I think is very important and will set the pace for your crew for operating. So another important thing that I haven't set up on my spurs yet, since I haven't finished the scenery at each of these, is adding some gates that crews have to come in and lock and unlock. Now the Translo doesn't have a, a gate set up, or I don't have one planned, um, but if I did, then I would, uh, then that would be another extra step. And one thing that I should have done was unlocked the switch before I started using it here. When I'm running this by myself, it's a little bit harder for me to, to go by all of the rules. Okay, so unlocking the switch is basically unlocking this padlock, and then that, that opens the switch. Okay, so that one we came in a little too fast on because I was unlocking the switch, which I should have done before I started this whole thing. Um, but we were still able to stop our train in, in enough time that we didn't um, damage the car. Okay, so let's pull these two cars out and place them here back on the main. We'll do our brake test first. All right, now we're good to go. So while that's moving, I'll show you, I give each crew a set of keys. These are the, the keys that go to the locks, either to control a gate or for my lock boxes. And then these are the littler keys for the, um, the padlocks for the, for the switch. So another thing that I'll mention that that I think is important to do to bring the one-to-one -one scale aspects of railroading into your hobby is um, go ahead and, and go outside and see what the real crews are doing and how the real locals act. And that'll give you some ideas. That's where I've got some of my ideas.
And there you'll, you'll notice is something else that kind of helps slow it down. I always tell crews to, you know, use the bell or the horn before, you know, going one direction or the other. Um, that's another thing that kind of gets you thinking, okay, am I, am I ready to go here? I don't want to move too fast. Okay, while we're over here, I'll show you real quick what one of my um, boxes looks like. Darling International here, this uh, spur in the foreground does have a gate. And so um, it's obviously not, not a physical gate yet since I haven't done the scenery. You can stop that. Um, but when I do have the scenery done, there, there will be a gate. And so you have to unlock it first. And so the white key here matches the white padlock. And basically you just need to unlock it like that and then you can open the gate. Now my lock boxes with instructions, which I've shown you before, which are instructions that the industry gives the crew, are pretty similar. They're just slightly bigger and they'll have a note inside and tell the crew where exactly to spot the cars. Alright, so spot these cars using a switch stick. All right, and we'll spot these two cars. So you can see now how this, all the, the extra steps here does take a little bit more time for the operation. Kind of slows it down a little bit. Gets the crew to think a little bit more too. And makes it a little bit more realistic. Speed it up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the flashing rear end device back on this last car that we just pulled out. Okay, we got a spot, the cover hopper first. I lose the connection there. There we go. Let's see, we'll drop There we go. Try to drop that car right in front of the conveyor. Didn't realize I didn't have the camera turned there. Again, it's hard to take the video and perform the operation at the same time. Throw the switch. I don't want to come in too fast, so it's a good idea to apply the brake a little bit. Okay. 
There we go. All right, so these cars, I didn't need to use the yellow brake chalk. Sometimes where that red covered hopper is, I need to use the brake chalk. Um, but it's, I, like I said, I think the, I need to check those wheel sets. I think they're a little sticky or not as free rolling. So it, I think they're kind of applying their own brake there. All right, now our work here is done. I'm gonna start to head back. So then at this point, I told the crews, you know, tell the industrial foreman you're done here, and then they can go ahead and reset our, the blue flies. So I'll do that right now. And I just place those um, little electrical connectors onto the rails. And we'll go ahead and set our brake chalk over here uh, for the next crew so they can use it. If they need to, if they have a, a covered hopper that maybe runs a little bit smoother. Okay, so we'll go ahead and line this back up for the main. We'll lock our switch. Do this uh, procedure in the correct order now. And we'll go back and get our cars. Okay, so um, that's that's it. Basically a little bit more detail there for you. Those are the, the main techniques that I use for my crews when they're switching an industry or a customer on an industrial spur. So again, I've got the, the blue flags that crews use, the yellow brake chocks in certain spots if they need them, and the flashing grand device, a very cheap way of doing that. All right, a little, came in a little too fast there, but not too bad. Okay, so we'll check our brake connection, it looks good, and we'll head back to the art office. And then the other things that I use are the padlocks for the switches, just uh, those switches that are on the main line. And then also, as, I'm, as I showed you, the, um, the locks for the gates. So those are the main things that I use here on the Stockyard Industrial Lead. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions about these techniques. And as always, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And I will catch you next week.